Let's take a look at another practical way that we can use ZenMap to learn about NMAP and to use it practically in our network. We're going to this time scan our entire subnet. I'm going to start by putting my basic information of my subnet in the target and then we'll create a profile. Here I've put in my information for my subnet, my network number, and my CIDR information for my subnet slash 24. Many of you will have something similar to that for your home subnet. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a specific profile for scanning all the devices in my network, scan them for open ports, both TCP, UDP. We'll run a few scripts, but while we're at it, we'll take a look at learning more about NMAP. So I'm going to go to profiles and do a new profile and command. So I'm going to give it a name. In my case, I'm going to call it Scan Home Subnet. So next, I'm going to come up to the Scan tab. And here I can see my target, which is my entire subnet, all the IP addresses that are in my home network. And I can choose TCP scans. And again, I don't have to go digging through all the documentation. I can click on anything, and it will tell me over here what that scan will do. So I can choose and look at any one of these. I'm going to use the Windows scan, and here it enables OS detection, version detection, script scanning, and traceroute. And then from the non-TCP scan, I'm going to leave the UDP scan. So I'm going to also scan UDP. Now for my timing, I can choose normal, aggressive, insane, polite, whatever I want to use on my home network. Again, each of these is appropriate depending on what you're doing. So if you're doing something against a production network, you may want to use a very light amount of scanning so you don't impact your production network. If it's after working hours, you might want to bump it up and do more aggressive scanning. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and select T4. I can enable all advanced aggressive options. And I'm going to leave that chose, the operating system detection, version detection. I'm also going to choose the idle scan zombie, which I cover in my documentation. If you download the video notes, I'll give you a, a visual picture of what this particular scan does. Another nice feature of ZenMap is if you put together a combination of scripts and scans and parameters and they don't work together, it will tell you. Next, I'm going to go to ping. I am going to choose the ICMP NetMask request. I'm going to uncheck that one and I'm going to use the sync ping. Then we can come up to scripts. Again, you can just pick any one of these and it tells you what that script does. You can see some of these are Bitcoin. Some of these deal with broadcast DHCP. So you can just scroll through and take a look. Here's some on PC Anywhere. Some of them have to do with Dell's Sonic Wall product line. Here are scripts on Citrix, so if you want to scan your Citrix environment. If you're running Docker, they have various scripts for Dockers also. Now some of them notice they have arguments. So if that script requires an argument, you can also see the arguments available for that script. They really have a rich set of scripts that you can run. They've got IRC type scripts, they've got iSCSI. If you scroll down here, you got LDAP, if you've got a domain environment. If you're using, say, the Mongol database, they have scripts for that. A good deal of scripts available for MS SQL. Because in my case, I have a lot of Windows devices. I'm going to choose the SMB, which is the protocol used for file and print services in a Windows environment, just to see what's out there on my network, if I have any vulnerabilities. And there's a lot of SNMP material or scripts that are available. This would be well worth your while because a lot of legacy equipment has 
open SNMP, public access. So you might want to run some of these to see if your equipment has that problem. Lots of SSH scripts. Now under target, you can choose to exclude certain hosts or you can put in particular host IPs and it will exclude those. So it's very, very flexible. Let's go ahead and save our changes. So now we have a new profile. I'm going to slide it down here and we have the scan home subnet profile that we just created. I do want to go here and add verbose. So dash V and the timing is dash T4. So we'll go ahead and use that and begin the scan. Now here it says warn me. I can't use these choices and it's going to quit. So I need to go back and look at what it shared with me and change the command line and parameters so that it can run. So in my case, it simply says you've specified more than one type of TCP scan. Please choose only one. So after playing with my parameters, I was able to remove the problem of too many TCP scans. And it's let's take a look at our output. And we can see the various phases of Nmap as it begins to execute what we've asked it to do. Notice it begins at 192.168.0.0 and begins scanning just all the way down the various IPs till it gets to 254, 255, and it stops. Now, once it determines what's up and what's down, it eliminates and just ignores all of the IP addresses that are not up. So here you can see here, when we get into scanning TCP, it has found 14 hosts that are up and from that point on, it ignores all those other IPs on your subnet. And it never goes back and scans the subnet again. So from this point on, all attention is on the 14 hosts on my subnet that are up. In this particular set of scripts and parameters, I did include UDP. So we are doing a lot of UDP scanning also. As I scroll down in the display, you can see a lot is going on. It's getting now into uh, scripts. And we've been here on this scan almost an hour and a half, almost two hours. Now in this video, I have special bonus content for all my Tech Savvy channel members. And we encourage you, become a member of Tech Savvy. When you go to our channel homepage, you can just become a member by simply joining. Become a member, $2.99 a month. Google takes 30% of that also, but we need your help. Become a member support the channel. It allows us to continue to produce good technical content. And if it doesn't benefit you, then I fully understand. But if you find that these videos help you understand technical content, I encourage you to become a member. This scan of our subnet took quite a while, many, many hours. Let's take a look at the result. We can begin to go through the Nmap output tab, just begin to scroll down. We can see the different phases of the scan, and you can see it's quite extensive. Or we can come over here to the host and services tab, first IP address that it found, and it pulls up all the information about that host over here in the details pane. We can see the UDP port 53 open, which is for DNS right here and it says port state service and version we can see that the state it was that port was open it's a udp port we can see a mac address it's associated with tp link tech which is true it has a trace route directly connected from the host that ran nmap to this device was basically directly connected it was a flat switch network Again, I can just click to the next device that it discovered and it pulls up all the information about that host. And we can see port 1900 UDP was open, universal plug and play, and it gives us a lot of information about that device. In the discovery of the AS Rock, which is the name of one of my motherboards, it discovered some information about that device. It's says it's probably Windows 10, which is Windows 11. So that was pretty close. Notice down here, it says that one service unrecognized despite returning data. So Nmap did get data back from this service. It did recognize the service was running, but it couldn't 
decipher the fingerprint. And what it did was it left the fingerprint information below and said, if you know what this service is, submit this fingerprint and your results back to us at Nmap. Here's the MAC address for that computer, and it is part of AS Rock Incorporated, which that's exactly the motherboard. It gives us the attempt to determine the, the operating system, which was Windows 10, and we said it's actually Windows 11, and that's fine. Then we have the next IP, which is my brother printer, and you can see I've got a lot of UDP ports that are open. I'll notice that Sometimes it says open and filtered. That means that it detected a firewall there, but it senses that that port is open. And then it tries to guess what is on that port. In this case, this is the NetBIOS datagram, NetBIOS service. This is EXP2, and Microsoft DNS, and LLMNR, which is your link local multicast name resolution protocol. The MAC address and a notice associated with the brother industry. IP address 135. And notice the icon shows a Windows device. You can see I have a lot of UDP ports that are open. It shows a lot of different protocols that are available. This is actually my video server. So that's perfectly correct. On the IP address dot 136 is a HPILO, the lights out remote management system for my HP server. And you can see my SNMP, my simple network management protocol, information is exposed here on port 161 UDP. So I may want to turn that off because this is the kind of stuff that can expose more information to a malicious actor than you want them to know. Here on IP address 160, you can see way too much information is open. Again, SNMP version 3. This is my switch. I have an HP switch. It's 24 port. All kinds of information is exposed about this switch. Every switch port MAC address is exposed. Not good. I need to turn this off. This is the kind of information that is very helpful to the IT pro to assess their own exposure to a malicious actor on their network that gives that malicious actor way too much information. We don't want that available. One of the IP addresses, dot .231, is one of my domain controllers. And you can see a lot of information is exposed just by running my domain controller. A lot of UDP ports were exposed and they're open. It sees an LDAP service running, which is Microsoft Active Directory. So there's a lot of information that's very difficult to hide from a person doing this type of scanning concerning your domain controller. Now the last IP is 250, which was 8 port 10 gigabit switch that I recently purchased. It's a very low cost 10 gigabit switch. And you can see again, SNMP exposes way too much information about that switch. I had actually scanned that switch pretty extensively and was very pleased that it was pretty much locked down. What I failed to do was the SNMP scan. And when I did that, it gave way too much information about that switch. Now I can go to the ports and host as I click on that tab. Again, I can go through any one of these computers and it shows me all the ports that are open and I can just walk down through. I can also go to topology and I can look at the topology. In this case, what I did was I just expanded the topology a little bit so you can see each of the IP addresses. It does have little icons that indicate where it, it possibly thinks it's a switch. There are some unique icons. There's different colors. Colors mean things. I'll show you the legend on the slide so you can take a look at it. There are some legends that indicate what these different colors, what the squares, what the different symbols are. So that is all part of the documentation for ZenMap. Under host details, you can click the host details tab. And again, just walk through any one of these and it indicates what it potentially feels that device, operating system, ports that are open, etc. You can just kind of walk through and it shows you different icons for what it feels it may have discovered. Under the services tab, I can click the services tab and you can see the list of protocols that it felt like it discovered. And when you click them, it shows you the computers that are hosting those particular protocols. So as I click through, 
it shows me which computers that it scanned that it may have those services or protocols running. So you can click through each of the protocols and it shows you which one. You can see Kerberos is on my two domain controllers, of course. LDAP, same thing. And you can just walk through each of the protocols or services and it shows you which computers it felt like had those related services.